Awesome. Welcome to 11 a.m. on a Wednesday, Sam. It is Dr. Oz, Laws and Chelsea Jean. We are here yelling live for you once again. Um, and, you know, we're here every single week for you guys having a chat. This day we've decided to do things a bit differently. We normally live stream to Facebook inside a private group, but today we are live streaming to um, our Laws page. So if you are seeing this and you're watching on a replay, please hashtag replay. We'd love to know that you're watching and getting value out of these. We do do this for you guys. Um, but the three of us, we are a dynamic team of experts. We come from uh, various fields, uh, but our goal is primarily to help you boost your energy and your well-being. And we want to empower you with really practical solutions so you can supercharge your health today, not tomorrow, but starting today. And we are here for you guys to answer any questions that you may have. So if you have any questions or any ideas during the week that you want us to be able to answer on these lives, it's driven by you guys. So if you guys don't give us a topic, we will come up with something that we know that all of us have had experience with. And uh, today, that topic is all about ways that you can improve your endurance because life is a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's, you know, it's all about you guys getting a long life and a health span to match your lifespan. So we will do a little bit of an introduction, though, if this is the first time you've met us. Maybe you've never seen us before. Maybe you've seen one of us, but not the others. <clears throat> so oh, my name is Laws. I'm a healthy habit coach. My goal is to help people optimise their in eating, their breathing, their sleeping, the movement and hydration so they can get unstoppable performance, focus, confidence, happiness, health and vitality. I have had four hours sleep, <laughs> just so you know. So to honour that, because it's important to sleep and I've had a reaction to some food because that's what happens to me, I am going to ensure that Chelsea and Oz do most of the talking today. I will just ask questions and drive the conversation. So if you see me fall asleep, it's not because it's boring. I just am very tired. So I'm trying to stay active on the treadmill under my desk on the walking pad. If you're seeing me walking, I am literally walking. Uh, but that's me, Oz. Uh, I will move over to Chelsea, who is to my left, Thank you, Loz. And, you know, even on four hours sleep, darling, you still turn up and you still do amazing and you look you look great too. So that's something that, you know, we're talking about endurance today and having those stores. And um, I'm a specialist in the lymphatic system. My name is Chelsea Jean. I have clinics throughout um, Brisbane. And I also teach and train other practitioners how to do lymphatic massage and how to incorporate lymphatic health into their own clinic. We've got over 11,000 women in my boob camp Facebook group who are all using the um, self-massage lymphatic gloves that I have to move their lymphatic system, to reduce the stress, to get rid of the fluid in their body and help them Breathe, feel better, look good, get rid of cellulite, all of all of those things that um, that the lymphatic system plays a part in. So yeah, looking forward to today's talk all about endurance. Dr. Oz. Hey, hi, how are you? And thank you again for being here. Um, you are also uh, live on my podcast today. So it's the first time I'm doing this live. So you can get the link on my different um, social media platforms. And um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm Dr. Oz uh, from B Vitality. I'm a peak performance clinician, so I help people to reach their peak performance by reducing inflammation and um, combining different things like natural supplements and uh, technology. Um, so yeah, so today we're talking about endurance and it's a really, really interesting topic. And so to kick things off, guys, um, we'll circulate back to you, Chelsea. Do you like my little plug there? Using the word. <laughs> uh, so we'll, we'll come back to you, Chelsea, and, and uh, let's talk about what, what is endurance? Like, how do you perceive endurance in your line of practice? And maybe, Oz, you can, you can be part of this discussion as well, obviously. Oz, you going now or do you want me to start? Ladies first. Oh, okay, okay. So when it comes to endurance, we can think of a lot of things. It can be endurance when it comes to my activities during the day, my endurance of being able to handle putting up with my children. Um, there's a lot of things when it comes to endurance. And one thing that really came to mind when this topic came up is 
willpower is needed for endurance as well. And one thing that a lot of people don't know is that willpower runs out. And that's where I really like to encourage people to get the things that they need to get done in a day early that they want to set habits for. So endurance means longevity. We know that we all want to live live longer. We want to be able to um, live with freedom, live with movement. And, and how the lymphatic system works in with that is if you are trying endurance for um like training harder, if you're trying, if you need endurance because of a health concern, if you need endurance just to get through your day, a lot of that is getting rid of the waste. And a lot of that is building your immune system up to be able to handle with what's what's going on. So they're the things that I talk about when it comes to endurance and the lymphatic system, getting rid of the waste, super important um, to this 15 litres of lymph can actually weigh you down and stop you from getting what you want and where you want to be um, moving towards. So what we talked about last week was really important about setting your goals um, and then getting in the willpower, but then bringing in that lymphatic system to keep you motivated and keep you going. Get rid of the things that are holding you back. So if there's stagnant energy um, in your body, if there is this heaviness, if you've got uh, these stuck heavy areas, seeing clients this week um, who are wanting to, a lot of women are wanting to go to Peru or wanting to do these long treks that they're feeling pulled to do this endurance type. I don't know what, if is, is it a thing in the 40s that women like want to return to where the, the country that they were born or wanting to do these treks, but I'm getting um, these type of women in, in clinic this week and where I'm seeing their, their bodies and they're carrying these heavy packs and they've got um, you know a, a lot of extra heaviness that they're carrying in the body. So we're talking about having helping them get rid of the lymphatic fluid that they're that they're building up and might be stuck. So when I'm massaging them, I'm feeling a lot of tension through this this week um, through their through their chest and a lot of build up. So maybe um, looking at the lymphatic system when it comes to longevity in hiking um, and and things like that. So do you find is is there any reason is there anybody else who sees you know wants these women at 40s wanting to go on treks because it's happening a lot it's like going on a pilgrimage and um i think a lot of people when they hit that i call it a pre midlife crisis or a post quarter life crisis that's more pre mid right and it's it's a realignment of self so you've got to think when women are hitting their their 40s especially a lot of the time if they've had kids the kids are growing up they're more autonomous they don't rely on mum anymore. They might have, you know, changed dynamic in their relationship because, you know, rather than being mum all the time, now they're becoming a partner. And so they're really looking to re-identify what it is that they're wanting to do. And so a great way to do that is to explore in another country, to do something challenging physically. And it's almost a recognition of their own mortality. And I deal with women of that age all the time. So, mm -hmm. you know, people are starting to go, oh, shit, you know, my mum's getting old. My dad's getting old. I'm watching my mum age. I better go do all this physical stuff, this, yeah. this pilgrimage back to myself before mm. before maybe I can't. Um, but maybe, Oz, you've got some input onto that. Uh, not onto that. I was more on the endurance thing. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> tell me what you want me to talk about. Um, I would say it's a mid-life crisis, I think. I don't know. Well, well what they start, oh, yeah, I call it a pre, pre they start yeah. exercising. They, yeah, they start exercising, they start training, and then they become sick. Well, the thing I would say with people on their 40s is that that's the age for you. Like, if we see, like, going a little bit back to, to endurance, mm -hmm. uh, to me, well, and I'm going to touch that point at, in a second, but I have to give some background before I get there. So, to me, endurance is the ability to sustain prolonged physical or mental effort. Okay, and this is a critical factor for to achieve your peak performance. Now, the normal body, like our metabolism, our cells, uh, for absolutely for most of the people, our peak, we reach our peak in terms of all our functions at the age of between thirty and thirty-five. 
that's our peak. And then from 35 to 40, we keep that, that peak. From our 40s, every 10 years, we decrease, we start decreasing like more and more and more. So it's, it's, in, a, it's in a period of 10 years by 10 years by 10 years. So that's why when we go to our 40s, is when we start saying, I never have pain in my leg and I to have pain, or I used to, to do this type of exercise. I never have a problem, but now I have this problem. So on our 40s is when all our functions start kind of declining. I want to think that that biological clock with the mental clock can kind of make switch and say, oh, I'm starting getting some pain. It's time to do something. Um, but that's in terms of what endurance is. At the end of the day, that's like that's why, for example, for athletes, the best age for athletes to get to the peak performance, it mostly when it's a competitive type of uh, sport, is to get there under 28 before the 30s to get to as, as high as they can. So then they have the next five years to actually reach that peak performance. But if you don't reach, if you don't try to get as close as possible to your peak performance before 30s, from the 30s to 35, it's going to be really difficult to actually reach your full potential. You're going to reach your peak performance, but not maybe your full potential. Yeah. Um, and uh, in, in, in terms of that, for me, there are five parameters that are more than that, but the five parameters that I usually take into consideration with my with my patients are number one, uh, and this is for endurance and peak performance, is uh, to optimize their body composition. So that's why we get 3D scans, we get uh, body fat percentage, we get all sorts all sorts of measurements, so we know exactly where they are in terms of muscle mass and and, and fat. Then um, tackling inflammation. And this is because most people, I'm going to start with athletes. Athletes live in constant inflammation due to the level of stress that they put their body and their mind on. The more stress, the more physical and mental stress that you get, the more inflammation your body is going to have. And athletes are at the high level there. But we all are. Like we all, I don't know anyone who doesn't have any sort of infl of, of, of stress. And that doesn't have any sort of physical activity that can cause inflammation. And on top of that, we have diet and deficiencies in terms of nutrition. So we all live with inflammation. So we have to reduce inflammation to reach our peak performance to improve our endurance. So most of the patients that I have that are athletes, the first thing is to reduce inflammation. The next thing is to keep the metabolism on a balance. That means not just being burning fat all the time, not just being burning carbs all the time, but try to keep it on a balance. And that's what I have seen that most athletes and most people can reach or can improve their endurance. The way we measure that is with a device like this that lost know it. It's a, it's a metabolic device, a breathing metabolic device that in the past you have to go to a clinic, get the test done once, they did do all the measurements, but that's it that you don't know what is happening on an everyday basis. Basis, As with this one now, you can actually have it done every day, every three hours, every four hours, before eating, after eating, before exercising, after exercising, and compare where your metabolism is. So you can actually control how your metabolism reacts by changing your diet, adding more uh, supplements or things like that. The fourth, the fourth point is reducing the toxicity, load, that, that we have, and here is where the lymphatic uh, system takes the most important part for us, also the, the digestive system. So knowing the level of toxicity will always help us to improve our endurance and in that way, reach our peak performance. And the number five uh, point here, and this is maybe something where Loss can talk more about this, is sleep quality. Um, and I have two articles that I want to share with you if you want to read them. One is about peak performance and endurance, which I talk about these five steps. Um, and the other one is about uh, sleep quality, like sleep quality, sleep quality versus quantity. So what is more important and what is the importance of both of them to reach, again, endurance and peak performance? But again, that's maybe something that um, um, loss can give us more, more information about sleeping patterns to improve our endurance. But those are the five parameters that I usually take into consideration with my patients 
to include to, to improve endurance. Mm. I'm just gonna unmute myself. And I think really people don't understand that endurance, and I think I think when people think about the word endurance, they think about oh, it's just about running. People really don't realize that it can relate to their life. And I think so many of us are caught up trying to just be busy all the time and doing all of these things and then getting burnt out and, you know, someone that's been burnt out and, you know, you guys experience seeing people who burn out quite a bit. Um, the reality is, is that burnout is partially preventable, right? Definitely. Would you agree? Yes. Would if you, you agree? identify it, yes. Yeah, yeah. If you catch so, yourself. Catch, you got to catch yourself, Yeah. Yeah, and I think sleep is one of those things, having been sitting here right now with sleep deprivation. Um, you know, sleep quality is really the big thing. Uh, sleep quantity is important, um, but, you know, once again, people aren't even getting that. The majority of people that I see in my line of work as a habit coach, like a lot of people get less than six hours a night. I mean, I know you, Oz, you have very little sleep a night. I have. Yeah, I'm but, you know, it, it does come down to that quality of the sleep as well. Um, you know, for people who are on their devices a lot before they go to bed, which is a large proportion of Western population, there are lots of reasons that they can get poor sleep. And one of those is, you know, lots of exposure to bright lights and EMF, so electromagnetic frequencies and all of these things that interrupt out what we call and interfere with our circadian rhythm. So your circadian rhythm is your natural cycle of sleep and wake. Um, normally it should be dictated by the changing of the light. Uh, if you actually look at the colour spectrum of the sun going down and the moon, well, especially the sun, you know, when the sun comes up in the morning, it's a red light. And if you know about the colour spectrum, you know, it's um, uh, red, what is it, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, yeah. violet, yeah, indigo, okay. violet. Um, so when you look at the colour spectrum, each of those represent different wavelengths. So, you know, red light is a different wavelength to say, you know, daylight, like blue light, right, that you're going to get in the day. Um, and so blue light, which we see in the daytime, because the sky looks blue because that's part of the spectrum, it's a very far away light. So it doesn't penetrate. It's a longer length, right? So it, it doesn't it doesn't penetrate as much. And that's why like blue light at nighttime is disruptive to your sleep. Well, if we think about in the beginning of the day and at the end of the day, when the light is that ready, that orange color, which is sort of at a different part of the spectrum, it's a different wavelength. So when we want to be going to sleep, a really great way a really great hack is to surround yourself with more red light really so that can have a big impact on your sleep and if you are on your device as soon as you go to bed and it's the first thing you do when you wake up you are going to have an interruption in your natural sleep cycle and that's a hormonal disruption I mean you've got all these different glands that secrete different types of hormones um stress and anxiety can interrupt your sleep sleep apnea if you sleep next to somebody that snores that can also interrupt your sleep not me, I don't snore. Um, but when it comes to quality, I think really, Oz, is, is that quality is the most important part and, you know, making sure you're cycling through all of those parts of your sleep that you need, especially your REM and your deep sleep. REM and deep sleep are where your brain and your body do a lot of detoxification. So if you're talking about endurance and you want to be able to sustain energy for a period of time, it's ensuring that you are getting deep sleep. And for a lot of people, they have no idea right? So being able to measure sleep can be an important part of that journey. You don't have to do it for the rest of your life, but using and utilizing technology to do that. You know, we've talked about the aura ring and things like that. There are lots of devices there that will help you identify sleep. You just need to be mindful of the electromagnetic frequencies, that's all. So, you know, you don't want to use it all the time. You can use it sometimes, but getting a really good baseline understanding of where your sleep is at allows you to then improve it. And like all of the things that Oz spoke about and Chelsea Unless you really are being aware of these things, there's not really much you can do, right? You don't have an awareness. How do you know that you've improved it? So when it comes to endurance, everything matters. You need to be able to continue to live a happy, healthy life 
scientifically, you'll probably be able to live a really long time. Science will allow you to live a long time, really. Think about it. You know, there's no reason that people can't live to 120 and beyond. But the reality is, is that all of the habits and all of the daily choices you're making now may impair your ability to have what we call a, oh, I've just, just got a migraine, your ability to have a, a, a health span to match your lifespan. So your health span is like your ability to still be fairly autonomous and do the things you want and still live a healthy life. There's not really any point having a good lifespan if you don't have a health span to match. You know, the number of people that you see living a really long time, but the quality of their life as they start to age starts to decline and they wish that they weren't living a long time, you know. And there comes a point at which it's very hard to repair the damage that you've done as a younger person. And so I think if you are somebody that's in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, even your 50s, it's really important to consider that endurance aspect of all of the things that you're doing. You know, if you are having to survive on lots and lots of caffeine all day just to keep you going, what do you think that toll is going to be for the rest of your life, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. I see head nods. <laughs> so one and big thing with endurance um, that I wanted to add in as well, Loz, is um, a big part that was missing with people training and doing their best and putting in their best effort. They, they're going to the gym, they're, they're working out, they're doing better with their diet, they're doing better with their supplements. But one of the, a big part that was missing is your sleep and is your recovery. So that recovery is just as important as your training session. Your body has to be able to rest and rebuild and then grow. Your glymphatic system um, of your brain, your lymphatic system of your brain has to be able to debug, has to be able to drain all of those toxins out, um, out of your, out of your head. And so they're, they're finding that, um, neuro diseases and like Alzheimer's and brain fog and all, all of those, all of those things are getting higher and higher. Yes. One, because of the mobile phone against the head. Okay. And two, because people aren't sleeping and they're not getting that, that quality rest um, as well, where the brain has to actually drain too. So that recovery portion Please factor, everybody, please factor that in. So when we spoke about putting the important things into your diary that you need to do, yes, training um, how many every times a week, yes, doing the food and all of that, but that recovery session, um, a lot of people are doing these ice baths as recovery, but it, it's just, and, you know, we use compression, we use circulate compression for, for recovery, for enhanced recovery. But it, as long as you're doing something that you're honoring yourself, that you're thanking your body for doing all that it, that it does, um, that's really important f for me because a lot of the time pain can then show, um, physically because emotionally you're not honoring yourself. So just take one of the big takeaways for me today is the importance of recovery and making sure that you're letting those toxins get out um, of, of your system and also thanking your body for the awesomeness that it does um, for you on your, your goals, whatever your endurance, you know, aims are to be to. Yeah, like I think for people to understand the importance of sleeping, because that's a that's a huge debate that we have. Like as we mentioned, what is more important, sleeping longer or or the quality or how deep you sleep? Both of them have have a huge importance. Both of them are actually linked. So the amount of time that you sleep, the quantity of time that you sleep, will will support physical and cognitive functions, will enhance your mood, and will improve your memory. So if you're doing a lot of mental work, if you're doing a lot of office work where you have to be concentrated all the time, you need length. And quality of sleep will support more or like go more in terms of restore the body, to repair processes, to um, recover the muscles, um, improve your immune system, and also regulate your emotions. So it's more for physical activity. So both of them are important at the end of the day because we all have both things like it's not that you're just doing mental work or you're just doing physical work. We do both things all day long. 
like either sitting, playing, exercising, even eating is physical exercise. And your body has mm -hmm. to recover from eating as well. Because yeah. even something as simple as eating is putting your body, your heart to pump more blood to your stomach, your uh, to your uh, digestion, uh, yeah, bowel and blah, blah, blah. All those things are physical activity. Um, and, and the mental activity that we all have, like from the moment that you wake up and you're running late or, or you have to hurry up, we have all those things. Like it's not like sometimes, as you say, people think that endurance is for athletes. And that's not true. Endurance is for absolutely everybody. We all need to improve our endurance if we want to perform better, either in, in terms of work or in terms of uh, sports or in terms of even um, um, family activities, things like that. So um, endurance is not um, restrictive to athletes. It's, it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. And every day, you if you are not doing something to improve your endurance you are actually losing endurance mm. you're reducing your endurance which means that's why people come and say before i could run or i could spend more time with my kids but i'm getting tired very quickly well yes because your endurance is going down so that's endurance every time you feel tired at the end of the day that you can do less things that you can concentrate less that you can perform less in terms of work or, or activities that you have to do is because you are losing endurance you're reducing the 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 endurance that your body can actually give you so you have to train for that and how you train for that is well what we have been saying for the last few weeks that are five simple steps eating healthy moving um, relaxing or, or reducing levels of stress sleeping better and drinking water those things are going to improve your endurance straight away plus mm -hmm. any other thing that we do here that obviously help us to get faster or to whole new level of endurance with the treatments that we offer you uh, in, in our different uh, in our different areas and i think the recovery question is is something that a, a lot of people miss and you know all of us look at recovery quite a bit and you, i always say to people your best measure of endurance and fitness is actually how quick you recover not how heavy you lift or how fast you run and people don't quite understand that um you know with your bodybuilding you need to learn to recover quickly because you've got a lot of volume to get through. So there are lots of ways you can, I guess, hack it. You know, Chelsea and all they both are in clinic providing a lot of different types of services uh, using different devices and treatment plans that can help you improve your recovery. Um, I personally use a lot of those services. I mean, I see both Chelsea and I see Oz. So as somebody that needs a lot of endurance all of the time, you know, it is hard. And if you've got if you've got disease, if you've got chronic challenges with your immune system from whatever's happened in your past, you may need to spend more time recovering. So, you know, I'm going to actually go for a float this afternoon. I'm going to go to, a you know, the city caves. I'm going to book mm -hmm. that. So I've got two more sessions and I'm going to book that because I know that my body will like the magnesium, turning my brain off. And so when I feel like this, it's no use trying to push through to do other things, which can be a challenge. And Oz has actually shared an article. So, uh, yeah, we might actually put that in the live on Facebook. I'll paste that in there. Um, but, you know, as you can see, it is so diverse, guys. Like there's a lot that comes into it when we're talking about endurance, um, you know, and you are not excluded from endurance if you're just an average person living an average life, you know. So, well, that's what you think can't actually focus on all of these types of activities, you know. Everything matters in the end. If you want to live a happy and healthy life, consider all of the other parts. But um, I think this has been a great conversation today, mm -hmm. guys. And if you've, if you've got any questions, please ask us in the Facebook um, posts. So we will cross-post that to all of our channels. Um, I'll put the video on YouTube, Oz's live stream to his uh, podcast. Chelsea will post it in her boob camp group. And remember, if you've got any questions, please send us a DM. You know where to find us all. Um, find us on our social media cha uh, channels. Like us, follow us, subscribe so you can get details of all of the amazing things that we've got coming up that can help educate you further. Um, but if there's nothing else to sort of mention, guys, I think we call it a day. Yeah, Loz, I think that was a great chat about that covers everybody. So whether it's just endurance for day-to-day for -day life or whether you're an athlete who wants to perform better. I think it's a good reminder 
But I also think that if you are an athlete and you want to go to the next level, please contact um, Oz because that's what he specializes in and can really help. There's lots more from this conversation that he can help you with. Absolutely. And I definitely recommend Oz. He's a, he's a little genius there in his clinic. All of the, the little treatments that he can offer. He knows a lot. He's not just a pretty face, right? I thought it was just a pretty face. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thanks so much for, uh, for stopping Thank by, you guys. guys. Appreciate all the people that have been here live with us uh, from all around the world. We've got India, we've got Philippines, love it. Uh, I'm Loz and Dr Oz and Chelsea Jean signing off for another week. Look after yourselves and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Ciao for now. Thank Bye. you. Bye now.